Hello, so uh, last video I said this. It's not going to be a tutorial, I'm sure there are plenty of those out there on the internet already. Well, I had a look on the internet and it turns out there weren't any, so I figured I might as well make one. Uh, so what is Fretfine 2D? Well, it's a scale length calculator and fretboard modeler, but it's also more than that. Uh, whereas other scale length calculators online just tell you where to cut your frets, uh, Fretfine models the entire scale length, uh, essentially from bridge to nut, and the fretboard. And then on top of that, it lets you export it into a variety of formats from uh, PDFs for uh, cutting it by hand, printing and cutting it by hand, to uh, SVGs and DXFs for uh, further CAD work. Uh, unlike some other uh, fret position calculators, such as, uh, let's say, Stu Max one here, uh, Fretfine 2D can create multi scale fretboards, uh, as well as having some microtonal options, okay, which, full disclosure, I have never explored. So I, I'm not going to cover them in the, this video because I don't know how they work. Um, on the other hand, StuMax Calculator does let you know what the ideal place to position your bridge is. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a bit of a give and take. There's not one isn't better than the other. They both have useful features and, again, it's just a matter of using the right tool for the right job. Okay, so let's make a fretboard. Uh, step one is picking your units. Now, being British, I work in metric. But if you insist on defining your units in multiples of barleycorns, uh, Fretfind does accommodate freedom units. However, in practice, it's one or the other. You can't use multiple units together. Personally, as a Lufia, I do tend to use imperial units for scale length and then metric for everything else. But, well, if I've got to pick one, metric it is. Now, I've changed this to millimeters, and you'll notice that nothing here has uh, changed. That's because Fretfine 2D is essentially unit agnostic. Uh, it will do the calculations based on the numbers you enter here rather than on uh, the units. So right now, it's just gone from a 25 inch scale to a 25 millimeter scale. Yeah, let's change that from 25 millimeters to 25 inches equivalent in metric, which is a uh, 635 millimeter scale length. To be clear, you can enter anything you want here, any scale length you want. If you can imagine it, you can have it. 24 and 3 quarters, that's fine as long as you enter it as a decimal. Uh, a short cigar length scale, that will work fine. Uh, you want to make a fretted violin, knock yourself out. As long as you've got an idea of your scale length, this tool will calculate it for you. Anyway, let's enter 635 and hit enter. And as you'll see, it's gone a little bit squirry. That's actually nothing to worry about. Fretfine 2D uses Imperial units uh, as default. So it has just made a, six, a 25 inch scale fretboard, but with these dimensions. The next option is your string width at the nut. Uh, now you get this by uh, usually measuring a guitar you already own. You measure that from the midpoint of your first string to the approximate midpoint of your last string, and then enter that result in the box. Uh, I tend to favour a 42mm nut, and usually that works out to 36mm, so that's what I'm going to enter here. Uh, then you repeat that by measuring the strings at the bridge. Uh, I'm going to use 65mm, and enter that there. Your fretboard looks a little bit more sane. So, this next step here is optional if you are making a single scale instrument but it will be important on multi-scale instruments. So this is part of Fretfine's uh, fretboard modeling. You can, again, you can ignore it, but I'm gonna put here an overhang of three millimeters, which will equally spread a three millimeter overhang along the sides of the fretboard. Uh, you have options for changing that overhang so you have separate ones at the nut and the bridge or the first fret and the last fret, but I tend to find equal is more than enough for everything. Calculation method, usually I do not mess with that. Uh, the Scala stuff and the just here is for microtonal stuff. Yeah, that, this is essentially modeled a fretboard. Now you can change the numbers of frets and strings here. So let's just change that to a 21 fret and boom, three frets are gone. Let's change that back to 24. And you can change this to anything you want. So if say you want a 36 fret uh, 12 string guitar, you would enter 36 and 12 and there you go. Now, word of warning, one thing Fretfind doesn't model are string courses. Uh, so you'll notice that if you enter 12 strings here, it will model them as 12 equally, equally spaced strings. And finally, the saving options. So on the right here, you've got all your uh, various options. 
Uh, DXF download, SVG download, and CSV download, uh, these are more for working with things in uh, CAD software. Uh, whereas if you are planning on printing this and applying it directly to a fretboard and cutting it, you would want to download it either as a single page or as a multi-page in either letter format for uh, American printers or A4 for everyone else in the world. The multi scale really isn't all that different, you just need to know which two scales you're using. So uh, first select multi scale, and you'll see it has defaulted back to uh, Imperial units and got a bit screwy. It's picked uh, 25 inches and 28 inches as the default scale, so let's just enter those in uh, metric. That's 635 millimeters and 711.2 uh, for uh, 28. And there you go, a fan fret fretboard. The final option is the perpendicular fret distance here. This lets you pick which of the frets of between your two scale lengths is the perpendicular one. By default, it sets it to 0.5, which is the uh, 12th fret here. If you're following Ben Crow's Nebula 2 build, uh, he has chosen the 9th fret as his perpendicular fret. So let's just say we're going to do that. Click on this uh, question mark box up here. Fret find will give you a list of what numbers to use in that box for which approximate frets. Fret number nine here is 0 0.40540. So let's just copy and paste that in here. Hit enter. And the, the parallel fret is now the ninth fret. The rest is really the same as a single scale fretboard. If you are a lefty, this does have a lefty mode. Well, the trick here is either to export it as a format and then uh, flip it in CAD, or alternatively, you just put your longest scale length as your first scale length. So let's just flip these two around. There you go. I said earlier this was important, and let me just briefly explain why. And for this, let's go into uh, Inkscape. So these are two identical fretboards that I prepared earlier. The difference between them is that the fretboard on the left has no fretboard overhang, and the fretboard on the right has a fretboard overhang. And they look identical for all intents and purposes until you bring them together. Look at them rather carefully. It's not obviously apparent on most of the scale, except up here, where you'll notice that the frets no longer quite match where they should be. This is because uh, FretFind is a fretboard modeling tool. It draws the frets across a fretboard. If the fretboard is narrower, it will draw them at a different position. I'm not actually sure if this is a, a, an actual cause for concern or an actual problem or if it would have an effect or not on uh, a multi-scale fretboard cut this way, but I tend to err on the side of caution and I think it's probably better if anyone who's trying to do this you know, adds the overhang to make sure that everything is modelled as accurately as possible rather than uh, risking screwing up the important part of your guitar. Okay, so what else have we got? Uh, yeah, Fretboard also supports individual scale lengths across the string. Uh, you it's an experimental mode and you have to enter each individual scale length. Personally, I think this is a bit of overkill. Uh, I, it's, yeah, I don't really see much point in this, but that is an option. And again, there is the uh, microtonal scalar stuff uh, if you are interested in that sort of thing. Anyway, that covers just about all I know. Everyone really should have this bookmarked if they're interested in designing uh, stringed instruments in any way.